Hello and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do mobile device testing in the browser. Now you can do this in Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox, but today I'm going to be using Google Chrome. In order to show you how to do this, I'm actually going to head to Tableau Public and I'm going to choose the Donald Trump tweets viz that I made for Makeover Monday. Now this feature is kind of unintuitive to enable because Google Chrome doesn't advertise this really, really well. But if you've ever had a look at the HTML or the CSS behind a web page, you'll be familiar with right clicking on the page and selecting the inspect element. Now, if you're familiar with HTML and CSS, you'll know that this is basically the bare bone guts of how the web page is built. You've got your HTML here and your CSS. And these features are designed for developers essentially to uh, hack around with HTML and CSS in order to uh, complete their designs and develop their web pages. But what it also does is it gives developers the ability to toggle the browser so that it behaves like a mobile device. So you can see this option here as I hover over it, it says toggle device toolbar. And there's also a shortcut here on the Mac, which is command shift M. And when I do that, you'll see that it instantly on the left hand side enables what looks like a mobile device render of my dashboard. Now, when you do that in real time, it doesn't actually refresh the page. So what you need to do to actually render the mobile design is to hit the refresh option and get it to render the page. Okay. And when it renders, you'll notice that this actually does load the mobile device design that I built into this dashboard. So straight out the bat, you have the ability to view a dashboard here that is rendered in place. So it's got this border around it that makes it look like a phone and you're able to interact with it. You'll notice the mouse here is a circle, so I can click and drag, and it even has that behavior you'd expect in an iPhone where when you let go of the page, it continues moving to, to a gentle stop. You can obviously select items as you would on Tableau Mobile, just by touching and selecting various points. If you had filters and you selected them, it would also show you those options. Even the web page uh, for Tableau Public behaves like a mobile device. So you can actually test that behavior and see how it behaves on the web page. Now you can see here I've actually also encountered a bug. So when I tried to click out of that page, it didn't quite work. So if I click back here, then again, my phone behaves as if I'm heading back in the browser. So now we're back to the visualization. I just want to show you some settings that you might not be familiar with. You'll notice here that my visualization rendered with a phone layout, and it also rendered with these uh, sort of three colored areas up here. Well, you can enable those all here. So you can either hide the device frame and it just shows the frame of the page. And I can also hide my media queries. Now media queries are essentially points on the dashboard or points on the web page where different sorts of behavior start to happen. And essentially it's just showing you here where those breakpoints are. Now breakpoints in design are when things change from one design to another design, typically from mobile to tablet and tablet to desktop but they go a little bit further than that. Sometimes you can have three designs for a desktop, one for a laptop, one for a medium sized screen and one for a large screen. And likewise with phones, they all have very different um, sizes. And so you're able to change the breakpoints accordingly. Now, another thing you might want to do is actually change the device. And you'll see here that when I click this drop down, I have a big range of devices available to me. Now, unless you've configured this option, you probably won't have as big a list as mine. So if you actually just go here to edit, you'll see that this is where you enable all the devices that are available to you. And you simply just select them. And then once you go back here, you get the full list available to you. Now, another setting you can't quite see here is the ability to throttle the web page. So if I just expand this, you'll notice that the throttling option appears here. Now, what throttling does is it allows you to simulate the web page as if you're loading it on a specific type of connection. And so this allows you to do essentially field testing, but from your desk through the browser, because you can force the connection to behave like a mobile phone connection, either a slow 3G or a fast 3G. And you can even add your own. You can see here I've added an edge connection. So if I hit edit, you can see here the edge connection that I've added. I haven't actually checked if these are the correct figures for an edge connection, but I know for a fact that edge connections are super slow, much slower than a 3G connection. So how do I enable the throttling? Well, I simply select the option and it then tells me here that the edge connection is enabled. And what I want to do is I actually want to see this. I want to see this happening. So if I go over to the network tab over here, 
you'll see what happened in the previous run when I loaded the web page. Everything sort of loaded pretty quickly. Okay, so if I just hit refresh, I actually get to see each and every single individual query to the Tableau website. As the content loads, I can actually see which particular queries are taking the longest, how they behave during this connection. And as you can see, my edge connection is taking a super long time to actually load the content. In fact, the longest thing that took to load was this JavaScript. Okay, so this JavaScript element was one of the longest items to load. And so if you're trying to optimize content, you can simply look at this and start to understand where the biggest impact is on your dashboard. Everything else loaded pretty much okay. And now I have not only an ability to test how the design looks and feels, but I can also see what's actually happening with the connection. It's a really handy tool. Now, the last thing I want to show you is you might want to render this design in a mobile device. And for popular devices like the iPhone, Chrome actually gives you that capability. So if you actually just click on these three dots on the right hand side and show the device frame, it puts the iPhone design around it. And if I just set that to fit the window, you can see that it's rendered the whole uh, visualization in the device. And as I drag, I can see that. Now, wouldn't it be great if I could export this as an image? You absolutely can. Now here, there's an ability to capture a screenshot. It will ask you where you want to save it. I'm gonna save it to my desktop. And then I'm also gonna capture a full size screenshot just so you can see the difference. Again, I'm gonna save that to my desktop. Now, when I open up my desktop, you'll see that the full scan screenshot doesn't render the device frame. It actually just renders the web page. And that makes sense because obviously this image is much, much larger than my phone. But when I select this image here, you'll see that it's actually generated a nice large iPhone image. This allows you to sort of simulate content to your users, it allows you to add this very easily to your PowerPoints when you're creating guides. And also it gives you a very quick ability to do testing on your web browser, field testing through your web browser, and then some simulation to your users. Now the thing to note here, and it's very important to note, is that I'm doing all this testing in Chrome. However, on an iPhone, the actual browser is run by Safari. So although this is a close to reality test, it doesn't actually simulate the actual behavior of that browser. And that's quite an important detail, okay? So it's always worth doing these tests in the appropriate environment. Nothing beats a real life test. But whilst you haven't got access to hardware and as a developer, you're just trying to see how things look, this is as close as you're gonna get. I hope you found this video useful. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and reach out to me on Twitter. Thank you.